What is up everyone, welcome back to the Fire Emblem Three Houses Blue Alliance Maddening Mode Low Turn Count Playthrough. My name is Mecha and I'm not playing, I'm just commentating. And today I'm commentating Chapter 10 as well as the Ingrid and Ash paralogs of this playthrough. This chapter itself is not very difficult when it comes to the main objective. We have a lot of mobility options and all we have to do to win is kill Krania and then kill Solon and that's basically it. But we do have a couple of side objectives and we want to maximize our reliability. And that's where the real challenge comes through in this particular video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kill this brigand who drops a hammer because we're not going to get the axe of Avunga Bunga. So we need this one as an anti-armor weapon. And we also attack from one range with Byleth because we want to damage her battalion. She has the Sirius Pegasus company that was damaged um, last paralogue to the point of breaking. Uh, Hilda got hit by like a 38 hit. So that sucked and we need to like re-break it or re-damage it. Um, next thing, we weaken this beast's first phase uh, using the Scythia and our newly qualified Wyvern Dimitri so that we can set up the kill for Linhart. Uh, note that Linhart is um, holding the experience gem to get the maximum amount of experience and right here he masters the monk class for extra 2 magic. We don't need that extra range right now but it is helpful later on. And then we trade over the experience gem to Sylvain so that he can get another kill. He needs one crit out of two to kill the first phase of this beast. Uh, Sylvain is actually going to be a main target for kills in this chapter because we want him to reach level 20 as well and be a wyvern just like Dimitri. Which is why we're having him dance and go over to Krania and kill her as well with another kill lance who strikes. Once again, you need one out of two crits. Uh, this kill is kind of unreliable sometimes because uh, Krania is pretty dodgy even though Sylvain has Swordbreaker. That's why we uh, rally dexed him with uh, Fernand von Eyer to increase both his hit and his crit rate. Now, once you kill Krania, the second phase of this map starts, but it is technically still turn one, so we can still one turn it. And the nice thing about this is that we also keep effects like Stride on our units, so we don't have to do that over again. Um, including on Baleth, who's too far away to get Stride reasonably enough. So, uh, we start off this uh, second phase by equipping the Longbow. And now we have Ingrid use Assembly on this demonic Beast. Uh, seems like a bit of a weird one, pulling him further away from our units. Uh, but this puts, the be this puts the Beast close to Baleth so that we can attack next to her more easily um, and get the experience boost from Professor Experience. For example, on Sylvain, uh, we won round this beast's first uh, health bar using the Thunderbrand. If you're, if you're worried about the Thunderbrand's usages, then don't be, because it gets auto-repaired between the time skip. So that will take care of itself. Uh, we again weaken this beast. We purposely gave Byleth a different weapon now, so that she doesn't have two range equipped anymore and doesn't give Dimitri a linked attack anymore. Uh, that way there's a higher chance that Dimitri's battalion gets further chipped down. And this also sets up the kill almost exactly for Linhart, giving him another kill, getting him exactly to level 20, and also getting Annette, his adjutants, to level 7, uh, basically qualifying her for Cavalier and Pegasus Knight after time skip, because she gets 3 auto levels. Then we dance Sylvain, but Sylvain cannot make it across the cliff without, you know, some help. So we're going to send Alicithia over to do that. Uh, Alicithia really wants all the XP she can get, so she's going to steal the experience gem from him for just a little bit. Uh, before she warps him over. And then later we can use Byleth to trade it back to herself. Uh, before we get into that though, there is a chest in the lower left that we Kappa forgot to get. Uh, but we do still have Flane and Fernand available, so we're going to use Flane to rescue Fernand out of the forest. Like I said before, Fernet was recruited at a level where he really doesn't need to see any combat right now. Um, he gets on level to the point where you can just make him a Wyvern Rider after time skip or a Paladin or whatever he wants. So uh, we can use him for utility like this, like getting the speed ring in the lower left. And then all we have to do is use Byleth for um, you know a very multi-purpose turn. Uh, we trade back the experience gem so that both she and uh, Sylvain can use it. Byleth is going to reach level 20 off of this kill. Also getting ready for Wyvern Rider. We have been tutoring Axis and Flying basically for this moment. Uh, we damage the battalion further because uh, we got hit again by attacking at one range. And we also give Sylvain access to the experience gem again. We're letting him trade it to its himself. Uh, this time we don't need a crit because Solon is very weak defensively. So we can just two-shot him with a Blessed Lance Swift Strikes. And uh, that is the one turn of Chapter 10. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you didn't, make sure to watch the next paralogue as that is one enjoyable clear. Oh. 
All right, the Ingrid Paralog is normally known as one of the most tedious and boring and annoying maps to play, especially on Maddening. It features a merchant boss who infinitely spawns reinforcements every turn as long as he's alive, as well as a bunch of ambush reinforcements that can just strike you down when you least expect it and ways to find pulses that way. It's very cheap. The way we're playing it is much more interesting. You'll remember how we had to train Ingrid to level 10 uh, so that she could reclass the Pegasus Knight. Uh, we've accomplished that a little while ago, and now we can finally make full use of it. Thank you. Uh, we're also going to rally her, and then we're going to use our massive mobility options on her. Uh, we have a Dancer, we have a Rescue Use, and we have four uses of Warp, because Manuela got to Warp, and Linhart has promoted the Bishop, which means he gets double uh, white magic uses, so he can Warp twice. Um, so we're going to use all these on Ingrid, make sure she goes as far as possible. And the goal of this map is to either route it, or you can have Ingrid arrive at the bottom right. And you can guess which one of these options is faster. Um, of course, it does demand certain magic thresholds on our warpers that I'm going to put in the description, along with some other notes. Um, Linhart's magic isn't completely utilized in this map. Uh, we have fed him some stat boosters from gardening, because he's going to need warp ranges that are bigger than this later on. And we also mastered Magic Plus 2 for this reason, partially. Uh, but the first warp is like full movement, but the second one actually isn't quite so. He warps 8 tiles and then 6 tiles. But yeah, after we dance him, we can warp again. And that's basically the chapter wrapped up. Um, we have used Byleth to uh, kill another Brigand to uh, chip her battalion some more. And we're also going to use Ingrid to kill one of the enemies here that drops a Devil Axe. And the Devil Axe is, uh, at first sight, a pretty useless item in three houses. It can backfire, but it can... Um, it cause 10 damage after every time you use it. It doesn't seem very useful, but we get it anyway. Who knows why, but either way, that is the Ingrid Paralog in one turn. Speaking of annoying paralogs, let's talk about the Ash Catherine paralog. In this one, you either have a choice to defend Rhea for 10 turns or to route the map, and unsurprisingly, routing is faster. So now we have all of our main combat units certified to be Wyvern Riders, Byleth, Dimitri, Sylvain. Um, Felix is not a Wyvern Rider, he's just an Archer, uh, still working towards getting plus 20 hit. We use Hilda to cast Retribution on Felix, Dimitri, and Sylvain so they can counter 2 range and even 3 range enemies, of which there are a couple in this chapter. Um, Sylvain has to be in a bit of an unfortunate position for this, so now we have to double warp him back to where he needs to be, uh, closer to the lower right, where he's going to take out one of the three bishop bosses and encounter a couple of cavaliers and other enemies. Leave it to me. Uh, there are three bishop bosses in this chapter um, that are pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, a lot of them are kind of passively standing around doing nothing, and uh, that's why we have to aggro them. So that's Sylvain covering the bottom right. Um, Byleth is going to do the upper right corner of the map. Uh, she uses a torch first so she can attack the other bishop boss and uh, then she's gonna head up to the upper right corner. Ash uses a torch uh, so that we can attack on player phase. We know where the enemies are, of course, but uh, we can't attack them on player phase unless we do this. Felix takes advantage of this by taking care of the last bishop boss that uh, I didn't talk about yet. Uh, we did a bit of a switch up with the uh, relics. Um, Sylvain is using the Luin instead of the Lance of Ruin, not the one you'd expect him to use considering it matches his crest, uh, but it doesn't really matter as long as you just have a crest, you don't take damage from using the weapon. And um, Felix is actually using the Lance of Ruin, uh, which we've repaired in the Monastery, uh, because the 20 uses we have before time skip aren't quite enough. So here's Sylvain countering an enemy he can't even see in the fog, thanks to Retribution, uh, taking care of the Bishop, and actually getting a Steel Shield. And uh, Dimitri's going to take care of the top left corner of the map. Uh, he has Battalion Vantage Wrath, so he just O-Close pretty much everything he faces with ease. So it doesn't really matter what weapon he uses, so we gave him the Killer Axe Plus to train his Axe Rank. There's going to be a period of time where Dimitri cannot train Axe Rank or any rank at all, because he's going to be kind of annoyed at us. So that's why we have him train Axes whenever it's possible. Um, Byleth is uh, doing a couple of other interesting things. Um, she's training Leone as an adjutant, of course, so she can reach level 17 before time skip and uh, qualify for Paladin, uh, which is of course very convenient. Um, but also, Byleth is training the Galatea Pegasus Core, uh, which is a reward for that we got from the Ingrid Dorothea Paralog, um, just like the Luin itself, by the way. Um, that battalion is at level 1 right now, but Byleth is using the Model Leader skill to quickly level it up. Um, very useful. Uh, it's a skill that not many units get, it's really just Byleth, Seteth, and the Lords, uh, but this allows us to get strong battalions for other units later on. Um, we're also working on chipping it down, of course, um, but Byleth doesn't really take that much damage in combat. Uh, funnily enough, Byleth is using the Mace, uh, which is of course effective against the Armor Knights, but it's also very nice for being very accurate. And she actually one-rounds um, Pegasus Knights, doubles them thanks to the Rally uh, with perfect accuracy. 
Lysithia barely survived this one enemy and was able to counter KO um, with a uh, Dark Spikes hit. Of course, um, we had to have that on her to stop her from getting doubled and uh, one, hit, one hit KO'd. Um, she was saved from that by the shield. Uh, but you can see this Galatea Pegasus score is basically almost going to be level 5 at the end of this chapter. So that's another route map that we just straight up one turn there. Pretty fun how that worked. And as a reward, we get a uh, Choose the Wind item, which is plus one move. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.